Hi, I'm Jennifer from Log Cabin Schoolhouse, bringing you a neat notebook so you can relax and enjoy math. It's fun, it can be easy, it doesn't have to be all problem solving. Keep an eye on the patterns, watch for the very interesting mathematicians that can help us to discover and define math. You're about to see that it can be quite a fun adventure and the adventure can be different every time or you can enjoy the sameness of math too, however your brain prefers it. This is the Neat Notebook. This is the Neat Notebook on the basic operations. This is the first neat notebook I teach. When I do a string of neat notebooks, there's usually about eight to 10 basic topics. This is always the first one. I'm gonna share my screen now so that you can see what they look like. This is the neat notebook. This is the neat notebook on basic operations. Operations are like I always say to my students, verbs. In English class, we have actions. Actions are the things we're doing in our English notebooks. In math, the things that we're doing, we're adding, we're subtracting, we're multiplying, and we're dividing. And so those are the things that we call operations in math. So our very first neat notebook I always like to put together for the kids involves add, subtract, multiply, and divide. And we call it their basic operation neat notebook. We're gonna go through uh, multiple different neat notebooks that will show a compare and contrast um, in four different ways that you can add, four different ways that you can multiply. We could probably even do um, subtraction comparisons, but that would just be the inverse of addition because those are called inverse operators. We could do a whole neat notebook showing all the different ways you could divide, but division is the inverse operator of multiplication. So we're just going to really focus wholeheartedly on addition and multiplication when we do them. Those are called algorithms. Four different ways or algorithms to add. Four different ways to multiply. But in this neat notebook, I just want to show you what we call the standard algorithm for each operator. We're going to go through that very quickly just so that you can learn how to do this neat notebook. And as we're going through it, I'll talk about what the rules of neat notebook are. All right, so we have our neat notebook. And the first thing we're always gonna do is divide it into four quadrants. So if you're using OneNote notebook, which I recommend, um, it's, in, it's a Microsoft product, I always divide it into four quadrants, once down the middle, once across the middle of the paper. You can use regular notebook paper. Um, I recommend a spiral notebook, just a really cheap one from Target, um, uh, Walmart, doesn't have to be anything special. Um, hold it landscape style and have the kids flip through it. Do one every week. Don't do more, don't do less. Little guys um, complain of their wrists hurting. That is not a lie. Their wrists um, grow at different um, um, speeds than girls do and um, for some reason the metatarsals really do hurt. Let me get this back to where it was. All right now we can see it better. All right so we're going to do add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Subtract, multiply, and divide. And these are called operators and you're going to tell your kids, it's hard to talk and spell at the same time, um, write down every single word that I write down. So they're going to be learning to spell all these words. And every week, you're going to say the same words over and over again. You're going to find that there's not actually that many words to learn in math, and many of them are fundamental, and they get used over and over and over, and they get really good at math after they learn the language. Math is the language of the universe. English is the language that you use to understand history and um, to speak to your friends and your family. Um, but math really is the language of the universe and science. So we need to understand all these words in order to do both math and sciences. So super important. So I'm gonna do green now. And I always put little parentheses here, comma in the middle, and I say, hey kids, go ahead and give me two numbers. And today I'm going to do um, two, let's do two um, two-digit numbers. And I would say, kids, give me two numbers, and let's just do 53 and 25. 
Um, and I would let them pick and it's fun if you do this every week you'll start to see them picking easy numbers and sometimes you'll have kids pick really hard numbers like you'll see them go 99 and 1 and they'll see what happens when they do that and let them do that once in a while it's really fun um, for them to subtract 99 and 1 um, you know, nothing really happens uh, but let them do that once in a while or if they add 99 and 1 you know it's really simple um, but I try to pick numbers when I pick them that look relatively you get a little bit of um, operation fatigue when you add them together and subtract them so let's see let's so I'm gonna stack them up with the bigger one on top I tell them 53 25 and I'm being neat because it is a neat notebook right it's my neat notebook so I'm being as neat as possible. So I'm going to add five plus three is eight. Depending on the age of your kids, you're going to go slower or faster with this. Five plus two is seven. Okay, I have 78. I'm going to take a different color and I'm going to put a square or I'll always square my answer. Tell your kids, never make your teacher hunt for your answer. It's never a good idea. Um, now I'm going to switch to another color. I'm going to say, what is the name of my answer here? And they're going to become really good at this and they're going to holler sum. And then I'm going to say, what are the parts called that make the sum? And they're going to say add end. Add end plus add end. Let's see if I can spell that, add end. All right, add end plus add end equals sum. And then I'm going to have... 53 minus 25. Stack them up carefully again, you tell them. And I'm going to take 3 minus 5, and they're going to go, oh no, I can't do that. So now I'm going to switch to blue again, and I'm going to write down a word they need to know. That's borrow. I'm going to borrow from my 5, which is really 50, right? So I'm going to borrow a 10, which makes that a 4 or a 4D. And then I'm going to give a 1 to my 3, which is really like giving a 10 to my 3, which makes that a 13, right? So I'm going to switch back to my green. I have 13 minus 5 now. Uh, 8. And uh, now I have 4 minus 2, which gives me 2. I'm going to switch to red, put a square around my answer. 28. All right. Functionally, that makes sense. I was kind of a little in my answer, and I said, does that make sense? 53, take away about half. I get about half. Okay, yeah, that does make sense. Now I'm going to switch back to my blue, and I'm going to assess what is the answer to a subtraction problem called. They're going to become really good at this and holler, difference. And again, make sure they know how to spell these words. And then these two are ridiculous words that I learned when I started teaching. Menu end minus subtrahend. T-R-A-H-E-N-D. Now, when I look at these words, I think something interesting. Wow, look at this, you guys. End, 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 end. All of the parts end in end. So now there's something they can think about while they're trying to remember these words. That's kind of cool. Okay, so, okay, let's go ahead and I have something else to point out, but first we're gonna go down here and we're gonna look at multiply and divide. So, ah! Oh, I hate when it does that. Well, travesty of one note. All right, let's go down to multiply. We're gonna switch back to our pen. And now we have 53 times 25. And we're gonna do three times five is 15, carry the one. Five times five is 25 plus one is 26. Zero, I call that a placeholder. Two times three is six. Two times five is 10. And I'm a little bit offline here so I'm gonna try a little better next time but I did okay I would I maybe would work a little harder on that next time I, would, I was talking to my kids and, oh and then I would talked about myself too and say what I could do better in front of my kids because it's always good for them to see me working on my own self too um, that you never want to sound perfect to your kids 
um, they appreciate that about us as adults. So let's see, now we're going to add five plus zero is five, six plus six is 12, carry the one, two plus one is two, one, one. All right, switch back to red. And I have 1,225. Ooh, I forgot my comma. Don't forget your comma. And now I have to name my parts. Ooh, I did this in blue. I meant to do it in green. That's okay. I'll do it better next time. Tell my kids, work on that. And I'm going to label my parts in blue again. And what is the name of the answer of a multiplication problem? It is, they would holler, a product. And what are the parts? that multiply together called, they are factors. Factor times factor equals product. Now, what's interesting is I added these two together, which makes these add-ends, add-end plus add-end, which also makes the sky a sum. <gasps> Mind blown. That is so cool. So 1,225 is both a sum and a product, but in the big picture of things, ultimately it is a multiplication problem. So we are gonna call it a product, but I just wanted to point that out. That it is actually both. So the other cool thing I wanted to point out, I'm gonna switch back to my yellow highlighter. You noticed that Addend, addend, minuend, and subtrahend all end in end. And I always like to talk about words a little bit too with my kids. Well, the other cool thing here is that addend and addend are the same word, and factor and factor are the same word. Now that is because, switching back to my pen, um, addition and multiplication are commutative. And I would have a conversation about that with my kids. And I would say, well, see, the commutative property of addition means I can take A plus B equals B plus A. If I could do it in either order, then it doesn't matter if I put the 53 first or the 25 first, right? So I could put it in either place, the first place or the second place. But with minuhend and subterhend, I need the 53 to be the menu end for the difference to be 28, right? And I need the 25 to be the subtrahend for the difference to be 28. If I switch them around and the 25 becomes the menu end, my difference is going to be negative. So it matters that the menu end and subtrahend have different names so that when I'm talking about them, I can be very clear as a mathematician. The factor also doesn't matter because it's a b equals b a I can say 53 times 25 or I can say 25 times 53 and either way I'm gonna get 1225 so that's pretty cool that's why they have the same name and in on this side of my uh, neat notebook they have different names so I guess you could probably guess that in division they're gonna the parts are gonna have different names again right so let's take a look at my division side. I'm gonna change my numbers just a little bit. Let's change it to two divided by 53. And just so you know too, the other thing I, I sometimes will do is tell my older kids to go ahead and speed ahead of me um, if they want to, because I always tell kids to do that because it builds their confidence. And once you have built your kids' confidence, you have created mathematicians. Um, and so once they can get ahead of you, they're like, oh, Miss Jen, I have beat you to all the answers. I know all the words. I have spelled them all correctly. And they're hollering it out at me. And I'm like, great, good job. And I'm excited for them. We're all cheering and, and excited and celebrating together. Um, but so I'm only telling you this because at this point, I would have had to define what my parts would be in division before we got there in case they beat me to it. So sometimes I will define the parts like this for division and I'll say, oh guys, if you get ahead of me, just so you know, this is what division's gonna be when you get there ahead of me. So, okay, we're gonna do this now. Two into five goes two times and then sometimes I'll put a little multiply here just to remind them the procedure. Two times two is four. And then I subtract and I get one, I bring down. 
3, 2 into 13 goes 6, 6 times 2 is 12, and I subtract, I get 1. Okay, so now I'm going to get my red back out. Oh, wait, I don't want red yet. I need to do something with my remainder of 1. Now I want my red. Okay, 26, remainder 1. And I could have written that remainder as one half or um, a decimal. There's a couple ways. And you could have that discussion in your neat notebook. You could have three different answers in your division space. It just depends on what you want to do with it. Like I said, you could have a whole division notebook as well. Um, that's not what we're going to do with the basic opera operations neat notebook, though. So what is the answer to my division problem called? It is called a quotient. And the parts are called, um, oh my goodness, it's leaving me. Uh, di oh yeah, divisor and dividend. I was looking for a Q word for some reason because Q, my brain was stuck on the Q, um, but it's not. It's divisor and dividend. And I will sometimes think to myself, divisor sounds like scissors. Um, and so that helps me to think it cuts the other, the dividends into pieces. And that's how I remember that that goes in that place because sometimes I get them mixed up. Um, but you can try and remember which word goes in which place, however you want to try and remember them. Um, but that's my methodology. Come up with your own and have conversation with your kids on how you remember which word goes where based on what. Um, and so the other uh, word I would try and make sure the kids knew, and it's important for parents to know too, is all of these are called the standard algorithm. And that's the last thing I will leave, leave you with. So this is the standard algorithm of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And these are the ones that you really kind of land on after you kind of know how to do all of them. They would be the last ones kids learn. They learn easier ones in the lower grade levels and they work their way up to these. Um, so parents prefer these and we don't tend to like the lower level ones because our brains are programmed really to do these well by the time we're in about fifth or sixth grade. And this is what we land on and do forever into adulthood. Um, and so this is what we're used to and we like to help our kids with when we're doing school with them. Um, and so that is a neat notebook and I hope you've enjoyed that with me today. Thank you for joining me. I'm Jennifer with Log Cabin Schoolhouse.